Well, hello there. Welcome to the On to the Next podcast. I'm your host, Alyssa, and I am so happy you are here. We are back. Let's get it. Um, last solo episode, I feel like I was very soft. Like, you got my soft girl era. You got soft girl Alyssa. And we're still here. We're still soft. We're still... I'm trying to be comfortable in my soft girl era, okay? But I also just need a moment to just regroup but just like let's be real right now okay i need to discuss something that i feel like i've talked about before but now i'm kind of wondering if i uh, i have a new approach okay so i definitely have posted whether it's on my instagram story i've also talked about it i'm sure in the podcast how i need like an alpha man okay that's a cringy thing to say but let's be real right now it's How else do I describe it? I don't want, like, a douche. I just need, like, an alpha guy. To me, an alpha man is someone who is, um, you know, secure. He's confident in himself. He has his own shit going for him. He has his own life that's, like, a healthy lifestyle. He encourages. He needs someone who's also on his level so he can be an equal. He doesn't need to be the superior one. Like, someone who's, like, confident in himself and has his own money and has his own life and makes his own decisions and doesn't need someone to hold his hand, okay? Someone who's secure on his own. I love that, okay? We need that in our lives, okay? Okay. Um, and I think I've, I've gotten a little, gotten in a little loophole because now when I'm seeking or when I'm talking to these alpha men, I'm realizing (laughs) a lot of them are so selfish and I'm going to be real right now. Lots of love. I love your journey and I'm here for you and I'm supporting your journey. However, when these men are selfish, it puts things in perspective. It makes me remember the core differences of, I can argue, a man and a woman. I feel like there are generalizing women who are alpha women, but when they have someone in their corner, whether it's a boyfriend, a husband, a partner, a kid, a sibling, whoever it is, they are able to still compromise. They are able to still prioritize, okay, today my kid needs me, so I'm going to choose my kid's ballet performance instead of my office, my work job, or whatever the, whatever you're doing, instead of my work thing, whatever. Um, and they're able, the point is they're able to still live a life where they can have a healthy balance of, like, their relationships and then, like, their job, for example. I've met... <laughs> I got to dabble with some alpha men, for the lack of better words, and they, they, don't, they don't care. Like, no, work comes first, for example. I'm using work as, like, the thing because I feel like work is something that drives a lot of people, especially men, especially ones who are making good money. So I'm just using that for, like, the example. These men do not have kids that I'm referring to, but I'm using this as an example. They're like, okay, kids' ballet show or got to meet this deadline for work. Yeah, the deadline's important, but you know what? Your daughter's going to remember her fifth grade dancer that you didn't pull up to. And then she's going to have daddy issues, okay? So let's let's regroup, okay? We can't live like this. And again, this is an extreme example, but I'm kind of giving the like future, what it might look like for some of these men who don't know how to prioritize when they can put their phone down or put their computer down and, and work for the day and go and be a father or go and be a husband or a boyfriend. Um... I'm noticing that a lot of these men, they're great and they're supportive and they're going to love you and they're going to take care of you, but to a certain degree, because when you are affecting their time or their money, which is valid, I'm not, I'm not mad at you for it, do your thing, I, 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 I get it, but it's also hard because it's going to have to be a day where you have to compromise, when you have to be like, you know what, this isn't for me, or where you have to be like, you know what, I, I'm, I'm good. I, I have my money. I have my job. I have my executive title. I have my big, big boy job or whatever it is. And now I have time and now I have the energy to let someone else in. But some of these men, I don't, I don't know if they're ever going to let somebody in. I'm not going to lie to you. I've already seen patterns that I see in a lot of men, a lot of successful men. And it's, I don't, I don't know. It makes me a little nervous because it's like, it, I, am I always going to come third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh compared to someone who, you know, eventually is going to become your lifelong partner? Like, I don't think I should be number five on that list if I'm your lifelong partner. I think I should be a little higher up. And I'm not saying I should be your number one. You should always be your number one. But I'm saying, like, there's going to have to come a day where you have to be able to compromise. And I think that some of these men out here are taking it too seriously. And, like, boy, 
yeah, you're the alpha guy when you're at work and you're the top notch, big dog, whatever, do your thing. But, you know, it's nine o'clock. We can we can do something that isn't work related or like you can chill. You know, you can be your real self tonight. You don't have to be the fucking cool guy who's running the office like you can take a step. You could take take a step back, take a minute, regroup. We're going to be okay. And I just think that it's been glorified a lot, especially in the industry of, like, these alpha men and, like, their hot babe next to them. And I love that. But it's, like, are you really being a good partner? I don't know. I, I don't I don't know because a lot of these men, like I said, they don't prioritize the woman or the kids or whatever it is. And that's, I get it. Like, yeah, they're the ones who are making the money. I get it. There's going to have to become a day when you got to step up and you cannot be selfish. And I think I'm seeing this more with younger men who are ahead of their game. They are still in their selfish era and like no beef, truly no beef. Like, I love that for you because when you're ready, you're going to be ready. But I don't know if some men are going to be able to snap out of it. Because they're going to be in the high of always being in a selfish era. And I don't know what's going to have to make or break or shake them to be able to be like, wait, hold up. Like, let me be like a functioning, like healthy husband right now or a healthy dad or boyfriend or fiance or whatever it is. Honestly, let me know your thoughts. I feel like I've been experiencing this more because I am on a different level mentally with the type of men that I'm allowing in my life. And I want them to be men who I deem to be alpha, for the lack of better words, the ones who do have their shit together, the ones who are confident, the ones who know what they want. That's my my thing. <laughs> it's my new thing nowadays. <laughs> Trying to like be better and healthy and like have someone who's like more on my level for the lack of better words. But I'm also experiencing a lot of fucking a lot of flaws in these boys too that I didn't really expect in the beginning. So food for thought. Keep an eye out for that. Let me know. Like I I, I need someone on this show who's like in a healthy powerful relationship (laughs) if you are in one can you hit me up because I need I need to figure this out like I don't know I don't have many healthy adult relationships in my life that I can like base it off of so I'm literally making like using like fictional like fucking characters and tv and like the Kardashian like fucking Courtney and Travis like I'm out here using like fictional people and like characters and like movies and shows to be able to decide what I deem to be a healthy relationship and um, I need like some real life proof because I'm getting, becoming a little jaded out here. I'm not going to lie to you. Okay. Because I'm realizing once you like see someone for who they are and not for the potential that they have, that's a different beast. Like <sighs> when you see someone for who they are, who they are in front of you, what they are giving in front of you, that is a different beast compared to seeing them only for their potential because I'm someone who sees the potential in people oh my god they're so good oh my god they're only gonna get better oh my god they have so much love and potential in themselves and they're gonna grow great in their career and they're gonna do all these things for themselves and live a happy loving life and I want that for them I always do but it's also hard because when you have that high expectation of like who they're gonna be it's like yeah but they're hurting you and they're making you cry today so I don't care if in five years they're gonna be perfect today they're not and they're hurting you, and they're actually affecting you negatively. That's what we got to use. That's what we got to feed off of. And that's what we got to see what we want to do in that situation. Because being with someone and only allowing and giving them the love and energy because you think they're going to be great in a couple of years, and they're not good now, I don't know if that's the best move. I... I'm guilty of it. I have definitely let people in my life for longer than they should have been because I thought they're going to be good. They're going to have the potential. They're going to get better. And they don't because I'm enabling them, for for lack of better words. I'm allowing this behavior, and they're still getting what they want out of it and what they want out of me. So why would they even work on doing better? Like, think about that. If you are allowing someone to just be shitty, be inconsistent, um, disappoint you, to keep you on your toes and not in the fun way but you know oh but they were so good like a month ago like oh like they were so good to their last girlfriend I know they have it in them to be a good boyfriend but they're not a good boyfriend to me right now so why would I still think that's okay and uh, it's it's hard it's uncomfortable I keep talking about this it's fucking uncomfortable when you have to realize like shit they're actually not the best for me but I'm allowing them to be this person. I'm allowing them to be this with me. You're not trying with me anymore. Okay, 
that's now I I can walk away. Like I'm allowing you to not try with me anymore. I'm not forcing you to be better, but I also know like you have it in you. So I stay because oh they have it in them. Okay, well why aren't they doing it for you then? Where's that excuse? And there usually isn't one. It's usually just they're not doing it because they don't want to for you or because they don't have it in them anymore or because they got over it. They got over the spark and the chase or quite frankly because they realize that you will still keep them around when they aren't being their best selves and meaning best selves towards you when they aren't being happy and healthy towards you. You still keep them around. Why would they want to even change anything? If they're, still getting ab- if they're still able to sleep with you at night and do whatever they want to do with you and have the fun moments with you, why would they think about getting better when you're allowing them in your lives regardless? You know, <laughs> it's uncomfortable, I know. I had to realize that, and I was, I was enabling someone, and I was like, fuck, Lissa, you're a part of the problem, babe. Like, you got to work on this, too. Like, you got to know what you're going to allow and what you're not going to allow. And it's hard, it's uncomfortable, but I promise you, once you take off those rose-colored glasses, like my favorite thing to say, once those rose-colored glasses that are showing you the person that they could be, that are giving you the energy and the love and the hope of who they could be, you will see a different person in front of you because you will see them for who they are. And sometimes that's not for the better, sadly. So I'm in the space now of like, Okay, I'm going to see you for who you are, and I'm not going to fight for you to be different. I'm not going to fight for you to be better. Because if you want to be better, you'll be better because you want to be, not because I'm forcing you to be. And I think that's something that you have to learn, and it's so humbling. Because then you're like, well, why isn't he doing better? He doesn't have it in him. He doesn't want to. Maybe he doesn't want to today or tomorrow. Maybe he doesn't, he's not ready. And that's not a reflection on you. It's a reflection on him and where he's at. And I said this in my last solo episode. We meet people where we meet them and who they are in that moment. So if I meet someone in a space where they're not ready, when they don't want that energy, when they don't want to put in the effort, I can't be mad. I cannot be offended. I cannot take it personal. I cannot blame myself. It is not my fault. But... I can know, okay, they're not ready. So I'm not going to keep dragging myself through this this cycle if they're not ready, but I am. Or if I'm not ready, and you are. I'm not going to force you to stay. That's not fair to you. And I think that's something that I'm learning. I'm saying it out loud. I'm putting it out there. I'm saying it out loud to hold myself accountable because I know I could do better in this department too. It's not just, not just you. <laughs> I know I'm part of, I can be de- do better, and it's, I'm like, ugh, it just stressed me out, because <laughs> it's so hard. I listened to Brendan Burchard, he is like a life coach, millionaire, no, billionaire, lots of love, I got to see him live before, great guy, he said some gems that I had written down months ago when I saw him live and I just need to talk about it because it just put things so simply into words and one of the things that he said that I loved is to pick people and be with people surround yourself with people who are emotionally available and that's a hard one okay this is interesting because this can be uncomfortable not everyone's going to be emotionally available like i just said you're going to meet people where you meet them it's not your responsibility to 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 fix them or to do any of those things but when you find people who are putting in the work and who are allowing themselves this lifestyle and this lifestyle of health and wellness and this lifestyle of being open to people and being accepting and forgiving that to me is someone who I want in my circle and for the lack of better words the way to put this up in a sentence is someone who is emotionally available that is so great because not everyone walks through this world open with their heart open, with their mind open. And I think it's because people have a lot of things that they carry with them. They're jaded, they have trauma, they have negative energies, they have negative experiences, a bad day, something bad someone said to them, and that shit sticks with you. That is not something I am blaming you for. That is not your fault. You are not the reason you should not be blaming yourself unless you're like a really bad person, okay? I'm assuming this to like the general population who are just good people trying to make their days and trying to make it through. Um, those people, when they walk around and they carry heavy stuff, it, they're not always emotionally available. 
And then they're not going to allow healthy and emotionally available people in their life because they aren't there. And that's not something that I think we should blame them for. It is just simply a fact. They are not there. And I think that with that thought, it puts things in perspective of the type of people that you want in your life. And that is someone who is emotionally available. And this means a friend. This means a sibling. This means a mom. It means a grandma, a boyfriend, whatever it is, a girlfriend. Like, this is anybody in your life. Of course, family it becomes harder because they're family and you like to think that you guys stick together. But in general, like, when you're picking out people to be in your life, if they can't give you the love and, and the emotional availability that you are trying to give them in whatever capacity that means to you, that would not be fair to you. And I talked about this before. That's not someone you should keep in your life. It just isn't sustainable. And I want sustainability, okay? Not only for our planet, but I want sustainability for my life, for my health, for my wellness, for my well-being. Like, I cannot be with someone who is not giving that same sustainability back to me, for the lack of better words. So that was one thing that really was like, holy shit, I need to reevaluate. <laughs> no beef. Kind of going off the same note, Brendan Burchard also said, people don't have the time to wait for you to be ready. And this can sound aggressive, but let's break this down. People do not have the time to wait for you to be ready. So, for example, let's talk about the industry, just the industry I'm in, the acting industry, okay? When you book a job, you pull up and you're fucking ready to go. You do not come to set not knowing your lines. You don't come to set not having your wardrobe, not having your face ready to go. You don't come to set having your bags all messy. You don't come to set forgetting your script. None of that. You come to set ready because they know when you walk on set, you do not, the directors or producers, the rest of the team, the other actors, they do not have time for you to be ready. And that is the harsh reality of the industry that we are in. Not a lot of people, especially once you get it big, they do not wait for you to dilly-dally and maybe find your way and, oh, you woke up late, and, oh, you have, oh, you're hungover. No one cares. Wake up and go, go to set. Do better. Go, go, go do your thing. It's what you're here for. Like, they don't have time for you to be ready. Any job, quite frankly, when you walk in those doors, they don't have time for you to fucking, oh, I forgot my charger. Oh, I forgot my coffee. Let me make coffee. Like, no, they don't have time for that. They want you to go in and they want you to work. And if you think about that, but put it in a relationship sense, not everyone is going to have the time or the patience for you to be ready. Ready means... Maybe it means ready for that relationship. Maybe it means emotionally available. Maybe it means ready for the next steps, ready to communicate. Whatever that means to you, not everyone is going to have the time to be able to allow you to do these silly things that are putting you both backwards. Does that make sense? So I don't know. I don't want to offend it and be like, oh, I don't have time for you to grow. Oh, I don't have time for your journey. No, it's not what I mean at all. I just mean if you're not doing the appropriate steps, maybe I don't have time then. If you're not doing your part to take care of yourself and to do better and to be ready for when you do show up, maybe I don't have the time. I don't know. But I think that was an interesting way of putting it. And this works with business. It works with relationships. It works in any field, quite frankly. In school, if you're still in school, the teachers don't care. They don't have time for you to pull up and not be ready, not have your homework ready. Like, it just shows, like... Do your part, work on yourself, and then when you meet those people who are doing the same thing, you'll know instantly. You'll be able to click. They'll be able to tell right away, oh my gosh, she's ready. Oh my God, he's ready. Now I can be my best self with this person, and now I can get it reciprocated, and that is a beautiful thing. That is what we look for, and that is what we're aiming for. It's funny because I have been having people like friends in my circle, friends in my out, you know, different circles I'm in, whatever. I've been having people be like, oh, this is your I Hate Men podcast. Um, I hate toxic men. I hate toxic masculinity. Yeah, totally. Um, I don't hate men. I mean, quite frankly, I literally only date men. So maybe I'm the problem, right? Maybe I'm asking for this. I'm just kidding. Um, no, I see it as I don't hate men I've actually had a guy text me or reach out to me and say hey like I'm listening to your episode you were kind of talking shit about a certain situation was that about me and I lol because it actually wasn't about him <laughs> but I said lmao oh my god no like, that actually was not about you like that's crazy then I go but honestly if the shoe fits like wear it like I don't like 
you thought it was about you. So that means you felt self-conscious. You felt a little worried like, shit, maybe I did do that to her. I don't, I didn't think he did, quite frankly. But if he thought that, he did it to me or to someone because he was very, he felt guilty. You know, guilty enough to text me and like call, try to call me out. Like that just showed to me that he was like, oh shit, like I maybe have been shitty. And I reached out to her to do better. And I love that. I love the accountability. But it was just like, okay, so then do better for the next one. Okay? I'm not saying to be good for me. Do better for the next one. Because at this point, I'm over it. We're done. We're on to the next. But, but like, for the next one, do better. Be more self-aware. That's all I'm saying. And when, you know, I'm here. And if I'm saying my comments, if I'm talking shit for the lack of better words, if I'm calling a guy out or calling men out or things that men or people do in relationships, it's not personal. It's not me doing this to be vicious and bitchy. It's quite frankly me doing this to do it for the people who I know, like just to bring like to talk about it. Like I feel like this stuff happens to everyone. Like everyone in some way goes through these things and they're not talking about it. And so it keeps happening. I'm here trying to call it out for the lack of better words. So it doesn't keep happening. I don't want to keep having all my besties going through the same fucking boy drama because these boys don't know how to act because no one told these boys no, because these boys were never held accountable before. I'm, I'm over it. I'm not here for that. Oh my God, my poor sons, my poor future sons, Babe, like, I have so much love for you because those boys, I'm going to fucking whip them into shape. And my girls whip them into shape because we are not doing that. We are doing better. I, I, I can't. I can't. I can't with the old-fashioned mentality. I can't with the old-fashioned mindset. I don't want any of that stuff in my life, quite frankly. I'm here to call it out. I'm here to hold it accountable, hold them accountable. And if you have something to say, if you want to call me out, if you want to hold me accountable, let's talk, let's chat. I would love to. This is not me saying this is a one sided experience a one-sided relationship with me and whoever's listening this is me saying like I'm open to these conversations I'm my own for my own self too quite frankly and I'm here for it I'm here for the journey I'm here for the process and I'm here to also help you through your journeys and your processes and I just think that I, I think it's so funny when mine are like oh you're just bashing mine on the podcast okay clearly you need to regroup them baby boy because that was not the point the point was not to talk shit about you men and make you feel like crap the point was if that's what you're doing then yeah if the shoe fits maybe I was trying to call you out for that second or two but like my point was not like I'm gonna make men mad at me like that was not the point quite frankly if it happens it happens but that is not my intention and if it is happening that shows more about you and where you are in your journey than the other way around lots of love okay <laughs> okay anyways um moving on I think that I've had a lot of girlies in my life, in my world, all my, my girls, I love them, lots of love. I've gotten some DMs about girls who are going through breakups. Um, I've also, this past like month, have had more friends and girls DM me about getting cheated on. And that is a beast in itself. I'm not going to get into that today because I personally, from my knowledge, was never cheated on by a boyfriend of mine, okay? From my knowledge. If he did cheat on me, good job, honeybee, because I never found out, okay? But, <laughs> that's, like, so not funny, but, like, try out. No, um, but I don't want to speak on that because I personally, God willing, from my knowledge, haven't, hasn't had to go through that experience just yet. Hope I never have to, but you know what I mean. Um, the point is, is that I just do want to talk about a little bit of that post-breakup glow up, okay? Because we all know we have them. We've all been there. Let's talk about the starter kit. Post breakup glow up starter kit. Let's get into it. Number one, get your nails done. <laughs> Easiest way to get over them, get your fucking nails done. Get a new fresh nail, whatever it is. I have became in my red girl era as we're here. My my red nail theory, my red girl, my dark feminine, my my soft girl, all the things. My feminine era, she's here and I she's here with the red nails. That's how I like to cope. I also believe that spending time with loved ones, going back to your roots. If that means going home more, go home more. If that means going out with friends more, go out with friends more. If that means all the things, like whatever you got to do, go to the library, go on a walk. I did, I said this, I think, very early on in the season, like, oh my God, one or t episode one or two or something. When I started going out on dates with myself, 
That was the most, number one, humbling, but number two, the most freeing and liberating experience I've ever gone through. When I sat at that restaurant with myself and I ordered and I said, no, no one else, just me. And I ate my meal. That was, uh, I just got chills. Like that was so freeing. It was uncomfortable the first few minutes. I'm not going to lie. When the waiter was like, oh, just you. I'm like, bitch, just me. Um, no, sweetheart, me. Not just me. Okay, don't make it a negative. Don't make me more uncomfortable. Just me. No, me. I'm here and I'm eating. And that's what I'm here for. Okay. And then once I was established, once I got over the first initial like, uh, of like being alone and like eating alone and whatever, that was so beautiful, so freeing. I sometimes now look forward to that. Like I'll sometimes it's like plan. Okay, I'm gonna go out and eat like with myself because n- nothing teaches you more about yourself than when you're with yourself and when you're with self alone. The other thing I do, I did personally. Um, I w- I went back to my roots. I went back to my favorite things. I went back to my favorite hobbies. I started reading again. I started writing poetry again. I you know made a fucking podcast. That was a different level though. Maybe not. I'm gonna make a podcast. Okay. <laughs> I did different outlets and different things that were creative for me. I used my time wisely. I thought of different things that I want to do for myself to put my time into and my energy into instead of putting into a boy or to a relationship. I also started working out more. This is a classic. Post breakup glow up you work out you cut your hair you change your style all the things i've did those in some way or another i've done those and i did those and then also when you're ready you go on dates and you meet new people but when you're ready i was probably ready sooner than people might have thought i would be but it was because my relationship ended differently than others i wasn't it wasn't shocking when we ended it was kind of prepping like I kind of got over it and not got over it but I was able to come to peace with it is the better way to put it I came to peace with it because I knew it was coming and I would like to think that he did as well and that is why I don't personally I never took anything personal when we did end and I hope he didn't either and for the sake of that it was a little bit easier for me to get out there sooner but I also took breaks I also thought like you know what I'm not gonna entertain a bunch of guys just to keep myself feeling good like I need to feel good on my own and I think that's part of the fun that's part of the process but if there's one thing that we were able to see in Hollywood and with our or at least I'm someone who look up to like celebrities still like I'm like a little girl like I'm a kid um I look up to these celebrities and I look up to these women and oh my god do they just get stronger holy shit they get stronger after that relationship is over because they go back to their roots they find their power and quite frankly sometimes you get forced into being stronger because your relationship ends and sometimes it's uncomfortable sometimes it's sad especially if it ends in a sense of cheating I I do want to say I will touch on this quickly I do want to say if you got cheated on I need you to know that you are not the problem I promise you that you were not the problem and you were not the reason why he cheated you were not the reason unless you like went out there and like if you cheated first that's a different story okay you're not you you gotta work on this is something I gotta work on but I'm saying if you are being a good girlfriend or a good boyfriend and you get cheated on you were not the problem they were the problem they were either insecure they maybe didn't realize what they had until they lost it and that's not your responsibility Your responsibility is to not teach them, oh, look at what you had now that you've lost it. Don't go back. Don't try to throw it in their face. Leave them alone. Go ghost mode. Do what you got to do. That is different, okay? But if you got cheated on, I need you to look in the mirror, tell yourself that you are worthy, you are beautiful, you are not the problem, and that you need to do those daily affirmations to remind yourself that all the power was in you from day one. Okay, and I need you to know that because once you are able to realize you have it in you to be your own best self, you have the power in you to be the person you want to be, that stuff isn't going to affect you as much. And you're going to be able to get over it sooner. You're going to be able to welcome in new love. I hope you're going to be able to get you know get over and heal. But I also do know and believe that if you are able to seek help, seek help, see a therapist. There's nothing wrong with it. I am such a strong advocate for therapy. Do not think you are weak because you are going. Think you are strong. And I actually just this past week in therapy, I was working on my issues or my uncomfortabilities with being vulnerable, especially with men. And she looked me in the eye and was like, Alyssa, being vulnerable is a superpower. Do you know how amazing it is to be able to admit that you are hurting, to be able to admit that you 
have someone in your life that you care about so much, you think that that makes you weak. No, honeybee, it makes you strong because you're able to admit and you're emotionally intelligent and emotionally mature to be able to admit this person hurt me or this person disappointed me or this person upset me or this person left me and I'm sad and that is okay you can you can admit to that you can admit to being sad I I love I love the saying of like I'm just sad I don't love that you're sad but I love that saying because it's so simple it almost sounds juvenile like a kid like I'm sad like a little baby like it just sounds so pure of like you're sad that's okay we can we can work through that. But you admitting that you're sad is a first step. Let's let's do better. Let's get better, okay? And let's seek the help and let's do the things. Go get ice cream. Oh my god, the amount of, you know, runs to get ice cream and to take care of yourself in that way. That's therapeutic too. That's what you gotta do. Do what you gotta do. But it was just something that really opened my eyes. Like you can admit that you were cheated on, or you can admit that you were hurt, or you can admit that he left and that she left and that that hurt you. And that's something that I didn't always think I could do. I think that I was raised with only really knowing strong women in my family. I was raised with these women who held on to the generational traumas of their mothers, of their grandmas, of their sisters. And then I'm the oldest in my family. And without it was not intentional. I will tell you that much. It was not intentional. But I got put on a lot of that generational trauma that my mom carried, that my aunt carries, that my aunt, grandma carries, and that got put on to me because I'm the next generation. I'm the next oldest. I'm the oldest granddaughter. I'm the oldest kid in the family. Like that's natural. And so I was always raised that that's what you do. You get hurt, you hold it in, and you move on to the next. <laughs> Why do you think this is named this? Because I was taught the on to the next lifestyle so much throughout my life. It became almost concerning how easy I'm able to go on to the next. And I don't want it to be that easy. I want to be able to process things before I get to that point where I'm fully on to the next. And I think that I'm getting there. I think I'm getting better. But I think that it all goes back to you know your roots it goes back to what you're used to what you used to accept what you're no longer accepting and that's okay and that's part of the process and that's part of the journey so I don't I just just kind of totally went off my real topic of like post breakup glow up starter cat yeah I didn't even get to that fully but I need you to know post breakup you are able to cry you are able to hurt go in the shower oh my god I actually have so many good playlists um for like that baddie energy um i am on apple music sorry i'm an apple music girly ew i know i'm so cringy i'm not on spotify sorry 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 i don't really care my profile is public you can dm me and i'll send you my um my baddie i think one's literally called baddie boo so like go take a look um i do have some fun music that i discovered and when you discover new music you were just on a different level mentally so i can also like send you that if you want to dm me and i'll send you my apple um profile but i think it's just my name honestly you can look it up too um those little things are huge and then also just knowing you know write stuff down journal do something new try something new make yourself uncomfortable in a good way challenge yourself these are all things that you can do and i think the biggest thing too is that you have to learn post breakup is how to be okay, okay on your own, how to be comfortable on your own, how to love that space, how to not see it as you're lonely, how to see it as you're just hanging out, you're chilling, and you're comfortable and you're confident in that space. So I, I hope this helps. Um, I am going to end on that note because I do want that to sink in and I want us to just kind of go through the process together. <laughs> um, so yeah, please DM me any questions you might have. You can DM them to me. You can um, ask them on the link in my bio. There's a little like questionnaire um, section you can ask questions on and you can DM my personal or my podcast Instagram. And until then, I hope that you are having a wonderful day. I hope you're taking care of yourself. And I will see you when we are on to the next episode next week. Bye.